So this isn't my usual kind of content, but I wanted to make a film about a subject which I think is going to be in the news much more in the coming months. And that is the degree to which COVID-19 can absolutely wallop you for weeks or months after you've actually had it. I am, of course, talking about post-viral fatigue. Have you maybe had it? Are you still suffering? What's going on? Let's take a look at the science. If you've found this video, you may have also found the New Scientist article from the 15th of April, which is about all there is out there at the moment linking COVID-19 to post-viral fatigue, which is also known as chronic fatigue syndrome or CFS. The disease is simply too new for enough people have had it for long enough for the after effects to have really been monitored or written about or studied. And all the attention has rightly been on those seriously affected by the disease itself. There is a growing recognition that there will need to be care for people recovering from serious cases of COVID-19. But generally speaking, the attention has been on the mortality of the disease and not so much on its morbidity, that is to say, the impact of the virus on the body. I think as time goes on, we're going to hear a lot more about the people who are affected by what can be a very debilitating fatigue after the original illness. And if this is you, don't worry, you're not going mad. NHS doctors doing follow-up calls with people who have been released from hospital after suffering COVID-19 are reporting large instances of fatigue amongst that sample of people that they're calling. I'm still struggling with fatigue myself seven weeks after you know, getting over the virus when I had it in early March. Uh, there are not statistically significant, but I know numbers of people who are also struggling with fatigue after only maybe having had a relatively mild version of the initial illness. So what is post-viral fatigue and how does it manifest? A 2002 paper by David Peters and Sue Morrison lists the symptoms as the following. Now, excuse me whilst I read. Incapacitating and persistent fatigue, muscle aches, joint pains, weakness after exercise, headaches, swollen glands, digestive disorders, inability to concentrate, memory loss, recurring minor infections or low-grade fevers, depression, an increasing sense of being unable to function, sleep disturbance, light sensitivity, food intolerance and environmental allergies. Quite the list. And it's only in recent years that the illness has actually found acceptance in the medical community. Before that, the lack of obvious testable indicators meant that its diagnosis was often controversial. But times are a-changing. Here's a 2019 paper investigating the clinical value of cytokines on the condition. Uh, a couple of extracts which I will just read through. Inflammatory reactions and immune modulation are considered to contribute to the pathophysiology of CFS. And it is well documented that cytokines present in both blood and cerebrospinal fluid are closely associated with the progression and severity of CFS. Infection caused by viruses and bacteria is an important factor that induces fatigue via triggering immuno-inflammatory pathways. Previous studies have reported CFS as a common symptom after viral infection. Those studies investigated numerous viruses, including Epstein-Barr virus, herpes virus, parvovirus, and other viruses. <laughs> I won't try and say that. Xenotropic murine leukemia virus-related virus. Subsequent research reported that despite the high heterogeneity among different CFS studies, enrolled patients shared the same inflammatory signs and symptoms, namely sickness behaviour SB, which includes fatigue, fever, myalgia and some other CFS symptoms, and is mediated by pro-inflammatory cytokines. Sickness behaviour is considered as an evolutionarily adaptive behavioural response to infection. Once an individual is exposed to an immune-infective environment, inflammatory pathways are activated and a cytokine-mediated mechanism is triggered. And what do we know about COVID-19? Well, obviously, apart from SARS-CoV-2 being a virus, it's also so deadly because of the cytokine storm that it creates uh, as a reaction to infection. And particularly when that happens around the lungs, which can lead to pneumonia, ARDS, and ultimately, in some cases, death. So alongside that New Scientist article, it doesn't take too much 2 plus 2-ing to get to the 4 that suggests that COVID-19 may lead to serious bouts of post-viral fatigue in some proportion of cases. And I wanted to make this film to put the word out there to other people like me who are maybe still suffering two months after an initial infection to say, you're not mad, it's not in your head, it is a real thing. Just for reference, these are my symptoms with this bout of post-viral fatigue. Firstly, uh, really disrupted sleep. Um, takes forever to get through the nights, it feels. A real sensation of a night being long, and that's because I'm never really settling into what feels like deep sleep or non-REM sleep, which of course is the type of sleep that helps your body recover and heal. Headaches, uh, the closest 
way I can sort of describe the kind of headache it is, is similar to the one you might have after a massive bender, for example, where every step you take in the morning, it feels like your sort of brain is bouncing around inside your skull. Um, there's also a degree of wooziness and dizziness, although those words aren't don't quite capture the specific feeling um, that comes with it. Um, I've personally found that non-steroidals like ibuprofen can, can really help with those symptoms. Real concentration, memory, and focus issues. I reckon I'm about 10 to 20% of my normal productivity at the moment. I can only work in bursts where I actually feel okay. Waves of brutal fatigue. Like when it comes and hits you, like it's pretty much completely incapacitating. If you're having a conversation with somebody, you can no longer actually concentrate or, or focus on what they're saying. Uh, you can't keep your eyes open. You've really just got to go and lie down. Um, these come throughout the day in little bursts. They're often worse in the middle of the afternoon for me. I then have to go and lie down, sleep for maybe one or two hours every afternoon. Depression, uh, post-viral fatigue has been connected to depression before. Um, and certainly my experience of this is that it doesn't do much good for your emotional state. And variability, so you never really know how you're gonna be feeling from one half hour to the next, let alone how you're gonna to feel tomorrow. So, you know, some days you might actually feel okay and go, well, hey, great, I'm getting better, I'm, I'm gonna be fine now. And then the next day might be a complete write-off. So you can never really plan and that makes life quite difficult. So all of these symptoms lead to the next question, which is what's the treatment? And the answer is, sadly, in sort of the 31 years that uh, CFS or PVFS has been uh, acknowledged as being a thing, no one's really quite worked out how to deal with it. There isn't a drug, a magical drug you can take that makes it go away. The original 1989 paper by Wesley et al. focused on the benefits of cognitive therapy, along with reintegration of exercise. More recent advice, 2018, on the BMJ includes conserving energy and improving sleep quality. The NHS currently recommends lifestyle changes, CBT, cognitive behavioural therapy, and over-the-counter painkillers for symptomatic relief. So there is no magic bullet. My own experience of having had post-viral fatigue before is broadly in line with this. Um, so this is where I would start. Rest, uh, listen to your body, um, don't overdo it. When your body tells you it needs to rest, try and rest. Uh, eat well, uh, get a bit of exercise, but not too much. I find personally that uh, I feel much better when I have just a moderate amount of exercise every day. And beyond that, all you can really do is sit it out um, and just try and look after yourself. And then the prognosis. When I had post-viral fatigue 20 years ago, it was the fourth GP I saw about the issue who finally actually gave me the diagnosis. And he said to me, you will get better. Uh, but it will take weeks or months or maybe even years. Um, in the end, it took me a year to get better from that episode of post-viral fatigue that came after glandular fever. I'm hoping this one won't take that long, but maybe it will. We just don't know. There's so much we don't know about the after effects of COVID. I think the world is going to be hearing a lot more about these sort of things in the coming you know, months and years as more people have experienced infections and experience what might happen afterwards. So this really is undiscovered country um, and I guess we're going to find out but I think it is safe to say that it is a temporary state and until it goes away you just have to look after yourself. So that's it from me. Uh, I'm going to go and have a lie down. I actually am. <laughs> uh, but if you've had any symptoms yourself let's start a discussion in the comments. It would be good to hear from you and maybe the discourse can reach a wider audience. See you next time.